Hi, and welcome to our program. My name is Bruce Rutkin, and I'm an interventional cardiologist. I am the system director of structural heart disease at Northwell Health in New York, and I'm excited to be here today uh, with you all uh, as we talk about optimizing efficiency in TAVR. We're going to talk about access site management, uh, specifically for large bore access in our transcatheter aortic valve procedures. Here are my disclosures. The objectives for today are, are to review strategies for successful large access closure. We're gonna talk briefly about patient and vessel assessment, access techniques, various closure device selection options, our post-deployment assessment, and we'll touch on bailout options at the conclusion. Anytime we're assessing a patient for a large access uh, procedure, such as TAVR, a meticulous assessment of both the patient as well as their vessels are critically important for success. Some of the things that we take into account prior to the procedure when we're generating a plan include the patient's body habitus, and really the both extremes potentially are problematic, either extremely thin or cachectic or obese. Prior access, certainly it's important to know what procedures the patient has had recently, what the access approach and strategy was, and if it was used, what closure device may have been deployed. Angiography is critical for this assessment, as you can see here in the picture on the right, just to identify the landmarks, our, our target zone in relation to the bony structures. Ultrasound has also become standard of care for our large bore access procedures. And contrast CT, as we know, is the gold standard for access assessment in our pre tavi patient workup. You can see on the right just some of the common landmarks, the different vessels, and the relationships to bony structures such as the pelvic brim and the femoral head. Also pay attention to the location of the inferior epigastric artery and the bifurcation of the common femoral uh, where it splits into the superficial femoral and the profunda. You can see there the zone that we would like to access is highlighted here between these two uh, common marks and you can see here in the 3D rendering of the CAT scan. Access techniques certainly vary. Uh, however, most would agree uh, on a few basic principles. Ultrasound is critically important and in our institution is used for every single large bore access procedure that we perform. You can see here a picture of an ultrasound actually just showing you literally the needle as it penetrates the anterior wall of the vessel and then we can begin to advance the wire. It's always critically important when you're using ultrasound that you actually can visualize the needle in terms of uh, when and where it is puncturing the vessel. Again, you wanna be on the anterior wall and stay away from the lateral uh, or medial aspects of the vessel for successful closure. Many people find fluoroscopy useful and uh, certainly it's easy. It doesn't add any time for the procedure to the procedure. And it's just one step, as you can see here, most people will put a forceps or a hemostat uh, over the uh, patient in the area where they're hoping to achieve access. Uh, and then here you can see on the right, uh, an image of uh, the use of uh, what's essentially a micro a micropuncture kit. Uh, we use those uh, selectively. I'll use them in more complex cases. Some people use them routinely. I would say either is fine, whatever you're most comfortable with. The advantage of the micro access is that it allows you to assess your puncture and then you can even put in uh, the dilator or a four French uh, micro sheath and inject some contrast through it and confirm that you're in the desired location. If you're not, it's a very, very small puncture and you have the opportunity to remove manually compress for a few minutes and start over. Based on our pre-procedural patient assessment, taking into account all of the imaging as we've discussed prior, we're gonna try and select the closure device that we think is the best anatomical option for that patient. Of course, we're all familiar that there are multiple options in which to close large bore access for our TAVR procedures. First, we're going to discuss a suture mediated closure device approach. Suture mediated closure devices for large bore access often require more than one device. We know that it is important to avoid patients that have significant anterior calcification as that could preclude the device from functioning appropriately. The devices are deployed prior to upsizing to a large bore sheath. So this is done at the beginning of the procedure and the final deployment of the device is concluded after the large bore sheath is removed. 
Some operators prefer what's called a dry closure technique where they can go up and over and place a wire and a balloon on the ipsilateral side and inflate that balloon prior to closure to achieve what's called a dry closure. Uh, we will do this occasionally for high risk cases, but not routinely, but that's up to the operator and site's discretion, preference and comfort level. Again, assessment of the pre-TAVI CT is critically important. As you can see in this case, this is really a, a nice favorable patient. We're looking at really three things, sizing, calcium, and tortuosity. So this is really favorable because we can see in the stick zone uh, down into here or into here, depending on which side we're using. In this case, it's really either is acceptable. Uh, we've got nice straight vessels. We don't see any calcification uh, on the anterior wall, particularly if we're considering perclose. And the vessel sizing is you know six to seven, uh, if not greater, uh, millimeters. So this is really a favorable case. The other thing, of course, we pay attention to is the level of the bifurcation of the common femoral to the SFA and the Profunda. And we want to make sure that we're uh, a healthy margin above the bifurcation, of course, not too close to it, but we also want to make sure that we're well below uh, the pelvic brim so we're not potentially high and up near the retroperitoneal uh, space. And as you can see here, uh, we've got a favorable access uh, for this case. Um, I recommend doing pre and post angiography. Uh, some people I, I've noticed uh, have, have moved away from that. Um, personally, I think it's extremely helpful so we can assess what the vessel looked like before we closed and what the vessel looked like after. And that way we have a, a basis for comparison. Obviously, if you have a patient who's renally insufficient or chronic kidney disease, you wanna be very sparing with your contrast and there's ways you can do that. Uh, but I still think this is helpful technique so you can see here on the left, this is after placement of our six French sheath, uh, just demonstrating that we've got um, a nice, nice access zone here. You can see that we went a bit RAO in this case to open up the bifurcation of the common femoral into the two vessels beneath. And you can see here after the case when the percloses have been deployed, uh, successful closure, good hemostasis, no significant extravasation of contrast. Maybe you can make out a hint of a, of a, of a spot right here or a little dimple uh, where the sutures most likely were deployed. But again, you know, this is uh, a good closure. Next, we'll talk about the Manta vascular closure device. This is the first commercially available biomechanical vascular closure device designed specifically for large bore femoral arterial access site closure. As you can see in the picture on the right, Manta has 14 French and 18 French devices used to close large bore femoral arterial access sites from 12 to 25 French outer diameter sheaths. This covers all of the standard sheaths we are using today for our TAVR procedures. Hemostasis is achieved mechanically by the anchor arteriotomy collagen sandwich, as you can see also in this picture here. And the components are held together by a polyester suture and secured by the extra arterial radio opaque lock depicted here. Just a closer look at the components of the device. Here's the Manta closure device, the guide wire lumen, which we feed over the 035 wire, the bypass tube, the delivery tube. Here's the deployment lever, which allows us to activate the anchor at the time of deployment. Here's the sheath and introducer. We leave these on the table uh, until the conclusion of the procedure. And then when we're ready to close, we assemble those and lock the introducer into the sheath. And here's the depth locator, which we use at the beginning of the procedure while holding neutral tension at the surface of the skin to determine the depth of the arteriotomy, which will then tell us later at what point depth-wise to deploy our device. You can see here, uh, just shown again, um, here's your soft tissue, here's your vessel, here's your wire in the vessel at the time of closure, here's your, uh, your stabilizer plate, Here's your collagen, and you can see how we're delivering and creating that uh, sandwich as we described. And you can see here the technique involves an advancement of this uh, uh, tube uh, down onto the vessel very gently at the time of closure. We're pulling back with our right hand until we see our green yellow indicator in that little window, albeit while working at about 45 degrees, we'll hear a, hear a click. Um, and that is when we know that we have achieved a successful closure. At that point, we'll lay the device down on the patient and uh, we'll assess. Uh, again, how it works, uh, the device is inserted into the vessel. The device is positioned as we pull back to the depth of that original uh, marker that we measured previously. Um, and then we deploy our anchor and then we withdraw and advance the seal. Very simple deployment, rapid hemostasis and reliable closure.
Once again, uh, when we're choosing to use the Manta device, we do the same meticulous assessment of our pre-TAVR CT. Again, here you can see a patient that has uh, large vessels. These are all greater than eight millimeters in diameter. We don't see any significant calcification in our access zone uh, with the Manta, as opposed to the Perclose, where I'm looking more at anterior calcium. In the Manta, I'm actually more focused on posterior calcium, and that to me uh, would be something to watch out for and potentially consider an alternative closure option. Uh, you can see here no posterior calcium, large vessels, and no tortuosity. Here you can see the stretched views of those vessels. Again, the bifurcations are nice and low, and this would be a favorable case. Once again, always recommend pre and post angiography. You can see here on the right, uh, this is after placement of our six French sheath. Once again, we do it in the same way in every single patient in every case amongst all of our operators. So it's consistent and reproducible, and everybody knows exactly what we're doing every time. And here's our post. If you make it out, it's very faint, but you can see the marker right there. And you can see there we've got successful closure, no significant extravasation of contrast, and the vessel looks uh, essentially like we weren't even there. So this is really an excellent result. Let's talk briefly about bailout options. We all know that every vascular closure device uh, can potentially uh, fail, uh, and that's just inherent to, to vascular closure in large access. And it's important to know what your options are uh, if needed. So for access site bleeding, dissection, or occlusion, which are the things we, we look for, uh, your options are either to do a prolonged balloon inflation, uh, and that's always, uh, as we outlined previously, an option to, just to gain control of uh, the bleeding, achieve hemostasis, and then at that point, you can essentially just take a breather and consider what your options are. You can then go to either a covered stent technique. Sometimes the prolonged balloon inflation, by the way, does the trick. So you'll do a prolonged balloon, um, you will deflate, you'll inject, and, and more often than not, uh, that's actually sufficient. Especially if protamine has been administered at that point, uh, usually you can, you can uh, fix most cases. Covered stent is an option if there's persistent extravasation uh, following a prolonged balloon inflation. And uh, there are a variety of covered stent options. It's just important that you're familiar with them, know the products, uh, make sure that they're readily available to you uh, in either the hybrid OR or the cath lab, but wherever you're doing your uh, large bore access procedures. And certainly, last but not least, uh, if you have a persistent issue that you cannot fix with either of these percutaneous options, conversion to open uh, is always uh, an option. Uh, if the Manta device uh, does not achieve hemostasis, I would recommend going directly to a balloon technique as we described above. And again, if the balloon technique is insuff insufficient, I would recommend a stent-based strategy. Here's a bit more complicated case, as you can see right off the bat, as compared to the two prior CTs which we reviewed, this patient has substantial calcification throughout their uh, femoral and uh, iliac uh, arteries. Clearly the left, I would say, is a no-go based on the severe calcium throughout the entire uh, access zone here. Uh, we felt here that despite the disease, both proximal and distal, uh, that we had a reasonable uh, stick zone with uh, sizing in the mid eights, um, some spotty calcium. You can clearly see here, this is a very diseased vessel, uh, but we did feel uh, we would be able to, uh, to access and close this successfully. Pre and post angio. So this is our pre shot as always. And here's our post. You can see our marker right here. And you can see just at the marker, there is clearly a filling defect in the vessel. Um, when we see these types of things, uh, you know, certainly the discussion is what is the nature of that filling defect? Is it uh, vessel disruption with some degree of dissection or thrombus? Or is it possibly that we've uh, deployed the device and inadvertently advanced or somehow pushed some of the collagen plug intravascular? To be honest with you, it can sometimes be hard to distinguish, but clearly looking at that, we know that there is an issue that needs to be addressed. And to be fair, I would say that our, our strategy is not dramatically different uh, in either case. In this case, our initial strategy uh, was to proceed with a balloon angioplasty. You can see in the image on the left, a significant defect in the vessel, and it's just at the site where uh, our device was deployed, and you can tell that by that radio opaque marker. 
uh, we felt that following balloon angioplasty, uh, we were still unhappy with the uh, result in terms of the flow and the significant residual stenosis, and therefore opted to proceed with the placement of a covered stent at the site of the arteriotomy. You can see in the image on the right that following placement of a single covered stent, we've restored normal brisk flow. You may notice just at the site of the radiopaque marker, a small indentation in the vessel, which is essentially the anchor uh, that is tacked up behind uh, the covered stent itself. We do not uh, aggressively post dilate uh, these types of cases. Uh, again, once we see brisk restoration of flow, uh, at that point, uh, the procedure was concluded. In conclusion, there are multiple options for large access closure in TAVR. Each of these options requires detailed upstream assessment of the patient using multimodality imaging and a solid game plan and bailout plan discussion. We do that in our pre-case meeting for every single patient. Selecting the appropriate device for the patient is critically important for successful closure. As you can see, we talked about the different considerations for each of the closure options. Meticulous intraoperative technique with respect to access and device deployment is certainly key to minimizing any complications. As I say and teach our fellows, always check your work post-closure. We never leave the room uh, without ensuring that our closure is successful and that the flow uh, is intact and brisk. Potential benefits of minimally invasive TAVR with vascular closure devices may include earlier ambulation, shorter length of stay, and decreased bleeding and vascular complications. And these endpoints have been looked at in a number of uh, small studies. If there are no good vascular closure device options, certainly you should consider surgical cutdown or alternative access. Thanks so much for your attention.